very special guest to talk about that in just a few more minutes. Uh, it's going to be at Shorecrest Prep School, and we are going to make sure we tell you all about the various schools that will be involved. Plus, there's a lot of different activities that will be taking place this year. But first, about a few minutes before our special guest calls in, I always love to go through, you know it, the Fantastic Five. And I have to give a special shout out to my friend Renata. She called me all the way from Texas. Her husband had been listening to the show and they have looked for their fee waiver. Fortunately, she didn't qualify for it, but hey, that's okay. It's the first step. You always want to look for that fee waiver because you never know if you qualify for it or not if you don't look. And remember, the way that you find that fee waiver is through your school district's website. Whatever your school district is, put in Hillsborough County, free and reduced lunch, fee waiver. See if you can find it. And that goes pretty much for any school district around the country because we're not sure did. I think she's in, she might be in Harris County. I can't remember which school district she's in, but super, super happy that she was listening. All right, next thing. And I'm telling you the Fantastic Five, most of these things should be done in the very beginning of the school year. And so I'm hoping if I continue to scream this from the mountaintop, that by the time we get around as seniors to the new school year, you'll understand the immediate activities you need to be doing. So I just like running through this Fantastic Five every single show because my goal is to make sure that whenever you watch College Cash, not only do we give you nuggets of information that can help you out through the college application process, but that I give you every single step in a very brief form just the basic nuts and bolts of what you need to do. So first one in the Fantastic Five, the fee waiver. Second one, fill out the Common App. I've talked extensively about what the Common App is. I know that our guest is very familiar with the Common App as an educational consultant as well, and we will discuss that more in another show. Or, of course, you could watch the other, I don't know, Bezel, we're about, we're about good 14, 15 shows in. So pretty much every single show we talked about that Common App. All right, number three of the Fantastic Five. I just had a very long conversation uh, with a couple of friends about finding your counselor. To some of us, it sounds like a basic step. We know you have to know who your counselor is. Well, some students out there still do not know who their counselor is. Now, this is for, I don't care if you have an eighth grade student, a ninth grade student, so from middle school to high school, you need to know who your student's counselor is. And if you're a kid out there watching, you need to go to school on Monday. If you don't know who your counselor is, you need to figure it out on Monday. That should be something that you know by the time we have the show again. Now, the reason why you need to find your counselor is for your transcripts, because you are going to have to forward those transcripts. And every single school has a different way that they do it. I know that in uh, Hillsborough County, at some schools, they use a system called Naviance. Some schools still just use good old-fashioned pen and paper. Uh, At SPC, it's going to have to be done through paper because they don't take uh, various computer ways to do it. I know at Tennessee State, it can be done a couple of different ways, but typically you do still have to go ahead and resort to regular old paper mail. So you need to find your counselor within your high school so that you're able to forward that transcript. The other thing you have to forward, your test scores. And this is a very, very important time. Before we we get to our guest, I know she's going to call in in a couple minutes. I don't know how much time we have left before 11.15, but in a one minute. Okay. In this very brief window of time, there's been this thing called the SAT or the ACT. It's the spring SAT or the spring ACT. If you have a junior, they took this test unless they skipped school that day, which hopefully they did not. So parents out there, if you have a junior, tap them on the shoulder, get them off the phone. They should know what their test scores are, or they should at least be able to tell you when those scores are coming out. All right, I'm getting a seat and sick. Oh, my goodness, I forgot my headphones. Which ones? Let's put these on or else there will be no hope of me being able to hear Ms. Avenida Co- Hope. Hello, have you called in? <laughs> Lovely. How are you doing today? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you. I am so grateful that I got my headphones on so that I can see Miss Alvanita Hope, who is an 
independent educational consultant. But first, we're going to talk about this fantastic college fair that Jack and Jill of America has put together in Pinellas County. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the work that you are doing for these students. I'm going to scroll my screen up just a little bit. Uh, and Bezel is my producer. And I want to make sure that kids can see and parents can see the QR code. Are we able to see that QR code, Bezel? He's going to pull it up in just a second. But the nuts and bolts of it, the college fair is April 6th. 1 p.m. to 3.30 at Shorecrest Prep School in the Crisp Gym in St. Petersburg, Florida. So, Ms. Hope, tell me about the first 100 registrants who are going to receive these HBCU swag bags. Oh, and we're super excited about this event. It is our eighth annual HBCU event that we're having at Shorecrest Preparatory School. And the first um, students are people who are actually there to register. Registration will begin at 1230. We'll receive a swag bag. But better yet, we're giving away two laptops and an iPad. You should see my eyebrows and Bezel's eyebrows. Both of our eyebrows went up literally at the exact same time. We're like, whoa, did she say, you said two, you're giving away two laptops? Two laptops and an iPad. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so what will put you in the best position to win one of those? By getting there right at 1230? Is it a raffle? What, how are we doing that? Correct. So get there at 12.30, register, we'll give out raffle tickets because we're going to begin promptly at 1 p.m. We're super excited that we have these amazing schools that will be on campus at Shortcuts from Spelman College to FAMU to Hampton to Alabama State University. We're just super excited that we're going to have reps and alumni um, reps there to really share with students the opportunity for going to an HBCU. That is absolutely phenomenal, and it's so funny here. This is an interactive show, and so if you're watching, you may see the phone number uh, that's on the screen. Feel free. We're live today. I know we've been recorded the last couple of few weeks, but we are actually live. Well, I shouldn't say that because then if this one gets played. <laughs> Let me give the date. Today's date is, what is today's date? March 22nd, I think? 23rd? There we go. So we are live if it's March 23rd, and you can call in at the bottom of the screen and find out more information about any type of college questions that you may have. Um, but, Avanita, I wanted to make sure they can also still register with this QR code right here, right? They don't have to wait until they get there. Correct. Correct. We're still accepting registrants, and we would love to see everyone there. And we have a special treat that's going to kick off the HBCU fair. So you want to be there promptly at 1 o'clock to get that special treat. It'll give you a little flair of being at an HBC school doing a football game. It's that oh, that football. is going to be exciting. And, and you, you know, know what made me mention that this is an interactive show? Because Bezel, our producer, is literally on his phone right now <laughs> with the QR code up. He is registering his family. So I am encouraging you know the QR code works. If you're watching, go ahead and uh, get registered for that today. So tell me a little bit about this. I know it's the eighth annual. Why is Jack and Jill um, really invested in making sure that this HBCU uh, college fair takes place specifically in Pinellas County, but it's basically for all of Tampa Bay. You all have put an amazing amount of work into this for the past few years. Yes, we feel that's very important. It's one of our thrusts or that we do with the national chapter of Jack and Jill. And we just really want to make sure that we're giving students access and knowledge that their HBCUs are available. A lot of our students who attend our um, predominantly white institutions and independent schools, that, um, schools in the area don't necessarily, or uh, they haven't in the past, been given information about the opportunities of going to an HBCU, but I would like to say that that is changing, and we're glad that Shorecrest has partnered with us over the past eight years to ensure that um, our students are actually going and knowing about an HBCU. And I have a little tidbit 
Mm-hmm. We had a student who was a Caucasian student last year go to the Poon Cookman to play football. So the word is getting out. Oh, that is so good to hear. And and I really have to commend uh, Shorecrest for putting this event on. Um, tell me a little bit about Shorecrest since we're talking about it and, and the reason why it is, I'm assuming what you're probably about to say, the reason why it is important that they're supporting our community is because their demographics are a little bit different. Correct. Shorecrest is an independent, non-sectarian school located in St. Petersburg, Florida. It's a pre-K-3 through 12th grade school with about 23 to 24% students of color. Um, so it's really important that we embrace and let our students know that there are other opportunities other than the traditional or uh, what has been seen as the traditional route for college. And um, me being a student who went to a predominantly uh, white high school, um, I wished. <laughs> when I look back, I love my institution. My parents were HBCU grads. Um, but there's something special about an HBCU. And being at a school where I was one of four in my graduating class, um, you really look and you really embrace and try to find um, commonality, and that's one of the benefits of going to an HBCU. Although we all may be students of color, a majority are students of color, we are all diverse in different um, aspects. Mm-hmm. So um, in saying that, this is the sisterhood, the legacy the camaraderie, the networking, um, the homecomings that I see, um, the, from the facts to the um, sororities, is really something that um, should be embraced. That That is a great, great explanation. And for, for those of us, or, or for some of the uh, listeners or viewers out there who you've heard of Jack and Jill, but you're not exactly sure what that is, can you touch on that for just a moment as well, since this is sponsored uh, by Jack and Jill of America? In the yes, Tampa Bay area. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. We are the Sun Coast chapter of Jack and Jill. And we, um, Jack and Jill of America Incorporated, is a national mother's group. We're basically we're, um, not for profit to encourage and have our families and our members. And it's a mother's work group, so the mothers do a lot of the work. Oh, yeah. I'm quite familiar with all that work that we do. <laughs> The mothers do the work. The children get the benefits, expose them to various activities that they normally would not receive. Basically, it was founded um, 85 years ago, where we were kids who were going to the uh, normally white um, independent schools. What for other kids like them? So mothers got together, put together programming, and let kids know there are other kids like you, um, and to embrace that. And we go from ages three through graduating out from age 17, 18. And, and God bless those moms who start at age three. <laughs> I, I didn't start with my oh, student no. until middle school. And I do have one that's graduated out, and I have one now who's entering into the teens. Uh, she'll be going into high school. But it is absolutely amazing what moms are able to put together for programming for our children, but I love the fact that Suncoast is reaching out to the full community to involve everyone at the HBCU College Fair. And I I think that that is not only commendable of you all, but also the fact that Shorecrest is willing to host this event for all of us is is remarkable. Now, I want to talk a little bit about... We have some other amazing amazing sponsors from um, the Links Incorporated to New York Communities to HCA healthcare. So and, and that's exactly what are... I was about to ask you about too, the other things <laughs> that are going on. So let's let's take that back because I want you to say I want to make sure that all of the sponsors are recognized. So I think I heard you mention the links first. The Link St. Petersburg chapter. Um Mill Communities, which is a um, builder out of um, Sarasota, Florida, and HCA Healthcare. Those are our major sponsors. Right, and that is, once again, you know, speaks volumes to the amount of support 
that uh, students of color and other students as well are being able to get from our Tampa Bay community. And I want to also make sure that everyone understands just because it's an HBCU college fair, which of course stands for Historically Black College and Universities, I want everyone to understand everyone is welcome at this event. If you're thinking about an HBCU, great. <clears throat> if you're thinking about a PWI, great. If you haven't even thought about going to college at all, but you see there's an event where you can win a free laptop, still come on through so that you can begin to learn about colleges and universities. I think that that is, you know, an opportunity for all of us to understand. And, and also, if you're in the community and you don't know what an HBCU is, you have never heard of it or you've heard of it, but you don't understand why it's important, this is an event for you to educate yourself as well, no matter what color, race, ethnic, or anything. Uh, everyone is, of course, invited to this event. Now, uh, I also want to find out a little bit more about the other activities because it's so much more than just a college fair. Yes, um, actually, um, as a special treat, Shortcast is hosting with um, SACAC, which is the Southern Association for College and Admissions Counselors, a workshop on that day beginning at 8 a.m. Um, so they can come and they can learn about, um, there will be admissions officers and school counselors from the Southeast who will present on such things as the college search, um, making the best of a, um, a college fair, which would be very appropriate since there will be trickling on over to our college fair around um, 1 o'clock. And then scholarships and financial aid process, which obviously you know is very important in yes. um, finding the best fit okay, for, but for where you will be for the next three years. That part in the morning, that's only open to counselors? No, it's open to anyone. As when you register, you will receive a confirmation link that will give you um, information on how to register for that SACAC event that begins at 8 o'clock with registration with light breakfast, and then will end at noon so you can transition over to the um, college HBCU College Fair. So this is really a full day of events to get completely educated on not only HBCUs, but the college process overall. Is that correct? That is correct. And also, I want parents to understand this event is free. And um, Avanita, I know that being an independent uh, consultant, to be able to get free information, especially all day long, uh, I know, and and I don't I don't want to get into you know the, there are various rates that different consultants charge, but typically it's not free, and so that is another reason why community members, parents, teachers, counselors, uh, those of us in the church, pretty much I would have to say if you are involved with students, you should be at this event. Yes, we welcome everyone. It's going to be a fantastic day of learning about college, the college process, networking, um, and just being around other people who are excited about what's next in their future. Well, I am getting ready to transition my screen here because we are getting ready to talk more about you. So we want to make sure that everyone understands exactly who Ms. Alvanita Hope is. She is the founder of Interlocking Pieces Educational Consultants. She has over 16 years of comprehensive experience in college admissions. Alvanita Hope stands out as a distinguished professional with a profound understanding of the intricacies of the admissions process from both sides of the desk. So I love the fact that your website website is up. Interlock edconsult.com. Tell me a little bit more about this, why you got into this. What exactly is a educational consultant? Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Well, my story is unique. I come from a family of educators, and I ran from education. My mother is a retired um, elementary principal, my father is a vocational coach and a uh, uh, vocational teacher, rather, and a football coach. And I did not want anything to do with education. 
Yeah, my mother, who left the director or vice president letter of my alma mater on the plane, said that I was a Scotty. Um, I went to Atmos Scott College, and I was looking for employment. I was not looking for employment. <laughs> I was at home being a stay-at-home mother at the time, but I followed my mom's advice, and I interviewed, and I was like, what? Who knew that this was even possible? I was associate director of admissions from an alma mater, and I had the opportunity to travel the country to meet other young women to encourage them why a women's college. Mm. And through that, I learned the discrepancies that I saw between the independent school and those students who were attending a public school institution, the level of access and information they were getting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was confirmed when I visited a public school recently and the uh, from a typical class of an independent school could be a hundred ninety three kids to four college counseling. We're at a public school it could be up to eight hundred forty students uh, with a counselor managing one hundred forty one mm -hmm. um, as a caseload. And I asked, how are you able to provide personalized information, resource access? He said, we are unable to. Mm -hmm. We do it in a group setting. So that's one of the reasons why I started um, interlocking pieces. And it's important to get that information from someone, especially if he has the knowledge of both sides of the desk. My job is to not only recruit and encourage students to consider short, um, not short class, but consider at Scott College, but also to um, ensure that they had all the information that they needed, and I then helped make the decision who was going to be admitted or denied into college. Mm -hmm. From there, I then transitioned. I had, you said you have um, three in Jack and Jill? I have three in Jack and Jill, no, too. I have two. So I have a daughter. <laughs> let me, tell, let me daughter correct that. I only got two. <laughs> <laughs> Praise you for having three. I know. It's a lifelong commitment, it feels like. Um, so my youngest is 11, and at that time I was like, I can't travel the country anymore. Um, and because what part of my territory is the West Coast, so I became a college counselor. And I began to help students in an independent school setting learn about how to make themselves stand out in the application process because it is an art and science. And then I was like, I want to do this more and, and show and give back to families who don't necessarily have the access that students in an independent school setting do. So that's how I began in the Rocky Pieces. Wow. Um, this is a very, very similar situation as mine. I Pretty much the exact same. You know, you, you start having kids and originally what you were doing, you're not any, you're not doing that any longer. My background is television. And so, you know, once I started having children, became a stay-at-home mom, pretty much a full-time volunteer. And as my son got older, I started volunteering in his high school in, guess what, college and career, um, helping out students, filling out that next step. And so I decided that I wanted to be able to give back to the community, going back to my broadcasting roots, and here we are together today. <laughs> so it's... What about that? I know, everything comes full circle. So you're a little bit more organized because you have an actual business and a website. I just figured I just want to throw the information out there, let people hear it. And then that way, every single week, if you don't do anything but tune into my show, you know about the Common App, you know about the FAFSA, you know about the fee waiver, you know about finding your transcripts, finding your counselor to forward those transcripts, and you know about your test scores. So those are the basic nuts and bolts. That's the foundation. <laughs> there we go. But obviously, as a consultant, you go and you you dive much further into into that. If someone is listening and they're wanting to know why to get a consultant and, and what that process looks like, and, and not, I mean, I know that you probably have different packages, so I don't want you to necessarily go into your rates, but but take me through that process for, for a parent who is really interested in somebody who can dive, dig deep with their own child. First of all, as you said, you're a parent. I'm a mom first. So 
um, doing that, if I know that I want the best for my child, I know other moms and parents or guardians want the best for theirs as well. So that's the framework that I do all of my work. And in saying that, I just think there are, um, are numerous benefits of hiring an independent counselor such as myself. Um, one being that the personalized attention that you, you receive, you know, um, that you may not get through your goddess counselor alone or through your career center, you know. Mm-hmm. It, you really provide a holistic approach, you know. What are your ultimate goals? And it can start early. As early as, you know, middle school, thinking about what you think you may want to do as a career, okay. Let's think about mapping those courses to ensure that you are going to be able to achieve that goal. And in addition to mapping that course or academic course work out, what can you do in your summers to enhance your uh, knowledge and your demonstrated interest in that field? And I want to stop you right there, um, Avenida. I want to stop you right there because I, I really want to make sure that listeners are understanding this can start in middle school. Because so many families, especially families of color, they wait until, like, I, I'm getting calls from parents whose kids are seniors. I'm like, oh, wow. what have you been doing since middle school? So I, I really want to just focus for a moment on the piece of information, that, that nugget. And literally, that is the nugget that navigates you to the money. Because you have to do things as early as middle school. So for someone who's listening, and, and they have a middle schooler, what would be the first piece of advice that you would give them? The first piece of advice is to ensure that your student, um, your child gets great study skills, excellent executive function skills, and know that their grades matter in middle school. Um, because ultimately, the grades will determine what classes they will pick for going into their ninth grade year of high school with that trajectory on onward. My kids used to tease me each year. I was like, okay, you know your sixth grade grades will affect your seventh grade. All right, you know your seventh grade grades will affect your seventh grade. Then I read them wrong. So it's a blessing and a curse of having a mother in the school. <laughs> yeah. But in saying that, um, it's important to let them know that setting that foundation now and, and building um, relationships and teaching them um, although a lot of schools now or some schools may be test optional, but still some will require, the state schools will require you to take the SAT or ACT and learning how to take those standardized tests mm-hmm. will be important as well. Although we do not offer that service, we do partner with um, um, testing agencies that can help you um, with getting more that skill set to be able to do well on those standardized tests. Mm-hmm, definitely. Um, and yeah, so there yeah. are also students out there, uh, and, and parents, I could very easily see how, how a family may not know this. There are, because quite honestly, I, I mean, I knew my daughter was taking high school level classes, and I knew that, I knew her Spanish was going to count as part of her GPA. But I literally, I think I just found out that her biology and her math is also going to count Mm -hmm. for her high school GPA. And and I'd like to think I pay pretty good attention. So I know there are parents out there who may not even realize if if you have an advanced middle schooler, you mentioned the grades counting. Not only are those grades counting for placement, those grades, some of them are counting as part of your student's GPA. And that is another really good reason to a know your student's counselor and understand exactly what's going on but like you said make sure that you are emphasizing the importance of those grades yes um you don't want to say you want them to become lifelong learners but in that process <laughs> you really want them to understand that information and also teach them to be self-advocates mm. if they don't understand the teachers are there to help ask questions if they, you know, they don't have that confidence just yet, go to a parent, a trusted adult, to say, I need help. There's nothing wrong with saying, I need help. And in doing so, so you'll be able to use that skill set further along in life. Um, I'll use a story. My son, who um, very intelligent, national merit um, semifinalist uh, qualifier as a junior, um, but 
he didn't know how to ask for help when he was struggling with chemistry. Oh, and wow. he had to learn the hard way because, hey, I need help. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so through that process of failing up, he knows how to raise his hand and go to his teachers and really be an advocate for himself and his education as he becomes a lifelong learner and um, strives to achieve his goals. And I think that it, it is really important for families to understand building that foundation really does start in middle school. I, I kind of have the opposite problem. I, I kind of just, I, I go in and I apologize to the teachers. <laughs> My kids bug the heck out of their teachers. I'm like, I'm sorry. I know they have a million questions. But you, you definitely want to make sure that your kids can advocate for themselves. Something else that I want to touch on, um, because you mentioned helping your clients and your families understand how to best use their time during the summer. And that is something else that can, I I remember for my son, he actually started his science, um, uh, it was called STEM prep. He started in seventh grade, the the summer between the seventh and eighth grade year. And those are the types of things as well. Why is that important for families to find some of those summer events and summer activities for students as they're transitioning into high school? Yes, um, one, um, it's never too early to learn um, real life experience and get exposure to what you think you may like to uh, pursue in the future. But the second reason why is because um, it's important that I, I'm just going to be completely candid and transparent. It is not the same way that going to college and being accepted to college. <laughs> it's not the same process as I had back in my day. Um, it's competitive now, and I don't believe that I shouldn't judge everyone's a valedictorian in some aspect. Right. Um, so you need to figure out a way to make yourself stand out and um, let the college be able to see why they want to have you as a member of their community. So. Yeah, I, I, I literally was reflecting the other night, and I went to Hampton. And as I started thinking about my own test scores and my own GPA, I'm like, could I even have gotten into Hampton to, to this day? I mean, back in the day, I mean, you know, that many years ago, I, I was, you know, a pretty good student, pretty average. It was no problem getting into Hampton. I didn't think, I didn't think twice about, I think I only applied to Hampton and maybe one other school. And, you know, there was no question of would I get in. Now, I didn't get a scholarship, but I did get into the school. But literally, in this day and age, I don't even think I would have been that confident in getting in. I think I could have, but I would have been one of those kids applying to multiple other schools just to be sure. Now, yeah, I wasn't either. I applied to one school. I went to Xavier University, their store program, was accepted there through the store program. But I only applied to one school. Right. And my mom's like, you sure you want to go there? That, said, yep. That's all, we, that's all we needed to do. <laughs> Yeah, and and I love the fact that, you know, both of us are sharing this same story because think of all of the other parents out there who are so confused by this whole process and they completely don't understand why their kid wants to spend 50 bucks per application and apply to 10 different schools. Like, if I didn't understand what the college process is and, and how competitive it is and what it is right now, I would think my child was crazy talking about applying to like 10 different schools, especially with the application fees as high as they can be. But today, that is what families are facing. So again, bringing it back to interlocking pieces, your business, it is so important for those who have the ability to get a consultant, it is something to at least consider, I would think you would say as well. Yes, definitely. It is, um, I love to meet with families first, at least the first 15 minutes. Um, that is um, completely um, at no cost. Just to, you know, give advice and then if you like to pursue and go further, I'm happy to do that. One of my skill sets is helping and building that um, list of schools to apply to. Mm. But my real niche is really in helping you craft that essay. Oh, that's great. Um, it, yeah, I I um, I taught my I encouraged my young ladies when I was at Atten Scott. You need to be 
able to toot your own horn sometimes, and I'm tooting my horn right now. <laughs> I That is one of my God-given strengths to be able to craft that essay for students to show why they're unique, which is goes back to everyone's process is going to be different. Mm -hmm. And don't worry about where your, your friends are going or what they're doing. Focus on you. Where would you be happy for the next four years, your home away from home, and work to pursue that. Right, and I think that a lot of families also as well don't understand the number of essays because I don't even think we need in an essay for, maybe it was just a really short essay. I, I don't remember, but not only are you going to have your one Common App essay, but the paragraphs that are included within the Common App, the questions about the activities, they're, they're all like little miniature essays and then when you get into the part that you know really drives me what what i really want my show to focus on is allowing families to understand the ability to get scholarships those scholarship essays they're different essays for that as well so thank the lord that that is your niche i love the fact that that's available to families and and it is something that you know, it's an investment. And if you have the opportunity to invest in a consultant and that consultant yields you a full scholarship, well, then clearly that is an investment worth uh, looking into. Now, I want to take a quick break, and I, I'm hoping Bezel can look back at my screen again if we're able to show this one more time. Because I do want to make sure, if you're just tuning in, I want to make sure you understand that we're talking about a couple of different things, but our, our main job today is to make sure everyone understands that the HBCU College Fair is coming up. It is April 6th, so it's literally right around the corner. April 6th, you, you have on here the 1 to 3.30, but, but tell me again about the morning event for, for the counselors and also for the parents. So 1 to 3.30 is the actual HBCU College Fair, but, but tell me one more time about the additional opportunities that are available in the morning. Correct. Um, so beginning at 8 a.m. on the morning of the 6th of April, there will be a stock app, which is the Southern Association for Admission and College Counselors. They will be hosting a, work, um, a workshop at Shorecrest in that morning where there will be um, admissions counselors and um, admissions officers just really giving students information about the college process, um, the college search, making the best use of the college fair that they will be taking in the future and later on in that afternoon and about information, scholarships, and financial aid. And I have the QR code. I think Bezel is on the QR code for us again. You can actually take your cell phone right about. Don't you love QR codes? They make life so much easier. I love QR codes. <laughs> you're phenomenal. <laughs> um, but, but if you're watching, take advantage of this QR code that's on your screen right now. You literally only have to lift your phone up, scan the code, and register. And, and you said that um, they can not only register for the fair, but that they can also register for the morning event th one right through this one QR code, correct? Correct. And once they um, submit their registration, they'll get that added bonus of the link to register for the stack act event that workshop that morning. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to scroll down just a tad bit, and let's talk about this little bubble right here. The first 100 registrants will receive HBCU swag bags. We, we do, do know, need, need to note, though, though, you must be present to win. So, so let, let me know a little bit about those swag bags and the other opportunities. Uh-oh, I'm getting a hand raised. What are, what are we doing? Oh, Bezel has a question. <laughs> and like I said, Alvanita, this is an interactive show. Bezel, what is your question? Okay, so, so um, do the students have to do it? Or can I put them? When I did it, Okay, so his question is, does each person in a family have to register, or will the one ticket cover the whole family? Like, what is your suggestion on how families should register? I, mm -hmm. I would suggest clicking the number of tickets you need. You could just hit the plus sign and add how many tickets you would need. Um, but, uh, if, so if not, um, one person there and you get 
we know we will most likely have walk-ins that day, so we're going to be prepared to register people on site as well. Oh, perfect. Okay, okay. So, so if you're having a question, let's say it's four of you and all of you want to come, there's a little plus sign that you can click on to be able to order or to register multiple people. Um, okay, we were talking about the swag bags, and we're talking about the laptops. Uh-oh, are we taking a break? Sometimes Bezel gives me this little uh, indication that we actually have to take a, a, a true commercial break. Okay, so it looks like give us just a couple of minutes, and we'll be right back. We are going to do an actual true break from our sponsors. Touch Radio, the most loved station across the nation. In, 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 Touch Radio, Radio, Radio. Tell a friend, In Touch Radio. Oh, Ricky, 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 Ricky. Ask Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. You need medical or a lawyer. I got the man to do the leg work for you. We tried the other ones before, so believe me, honey. Down 813 Everything gonna be okay, car Ricky, he coming. He take in of Florida, grab a pin of sundown, 184-361-RIG, that's one 364 never word from the point forward, just recline, just ask Ricky, push your boy, stay fine, just in case you missed it, I'ma tell you one more time, 184-361-RIG, all Ricky has Ricky is a legal medical referral service, the doctors and lawyers in our network are trained in handling auto injury claims, and giving you the best medical treatment and recovery, now one 1-844-361-7425. By now, we're all aware of the dangers of COVID-19. Like others with existing health issues, cancer patients are at a high risk due to their compromised condition. If you are newly diagnosed with cancer, your care likely can't wait. Moffitt Cancer Center is the best place for your cancer concerns and to provide guidance to help you plan your next steps. We're here for you. Call 1-888-456-2839 or go to moffitt.org slash here for you. Hey, this is Agent Wright, better known as Mr. Clean. You looking for some great barbecues? Come see them two brothers in the grill. Located at 423 Virginia Street, Charles, West Virginia. We got ribs, chicken, pulled pork, brisket, collard greens, mac and cheese, baby. Come get some and get you a nice, smooth cigar. 304-550-4431. That is 304-550-4431. Come get some, baby. The rib man, mama, the rib man. pocket is information. You have to be educated on what is going on around you, what the rules are, which seem to constantly change when it comes to the college application process. I have with us today Alanita Hope, and she is going to continue to tell us all about the 8th annual HBCU College Fair that is coming up very, very soon. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. We are super excited to be hosting our 8th Annual HBCU Fair on Saturday, April 8th. I mean, April 6th, excuse me. Um, one thing to note, that registration begins at 1230, and we have a special treat for the first 100 um, registrants on site. In addition to giving away two laptops and an iPad, at this event. So come and learn more about um, from the college reps who will be on site from Hampton to Salmon to Samuel. Do, do you have the full list? Do you have the full list in front of you? Because we have time, if, if you have it in front of you, to just say what are all the schools that are coming. Oh, let me pull up that list really quick. Okay, in the perfect. meantime, just know that we are looking forward to having everyone there. And there will be a special kickoff of that um, HBCU event with something that's similar 
to going to a HBCU football game. I don't want to spoil the surprise, but I can remember a few years ago when I went. It is phenomenal. <laughs> and and I'm telling you, if you've never been to an HBCU football game or if you've never really understood the culture of an HBCU, I, I'd encourage you to come to this event. Even if, if you're not a person of color, who cares? Come and learn why HBCUs are so important. Because in this day and age, there are some HBCUs that are that are relatively under attack. And, and we're going to need full support from communities of all races to be able to understand, appreciate, and help to protect HBCUs because they are very, very well needed. I know that I mean, you mentioned going to Xavier. I went to Hampton. My husband went to Tennessee State. Most of the people that I know who are um, in particular fields um, that are sort of your, your higher paying fields, most of them went to HBCUs if they're people of color. And I say that so that folks understand the importance of being in an environment that is supportive of you as opposed to one where you're still kind of navigating the waters of who you are. HBCUs allow you to be comfortable. I, I love the fact that, and you know, I'll just I'll just say it. When my when my son was in high school and he was at a predominantly um, white high school, I did not let him wear his hair a certain way. Bad mom, judge me, say whatever you want. But the fact that he can have them big, long, twisty, whatever the heck he has going on in his head right now, and when I show people pictures of him, they're like. Ooh, look at his hair. I'm like, yeah, it looks great. Doesn't it? So the right, fact, I'm, I'm the same way. Exactly. So that, exactly. <laughs> but I can have him at Tennessee State. He's in the pre-med program, um, potentially headed to Meharry. He's got this big, huge thing of hair going on. And I know no one is judging him. No one is looking at him like, what is going on? He's comfortable in his own skin. He has people who look like him who are smart, who are into science. And it's just such, I, I, as a mom, it's such a relief having him in that environment. Now, you know, the, the organization, the paperwork, you know, we still got a long way to go, don't we, <laughs> as far as HBCUs. <laughs> but I think that's part of it. That's part of the learning process. Okay, do you have the list up of, of who all is going to be in attendance? Okay, perfect. Alabama, yes. Alabama State University, and they're still getting RCP. Our, um, Alabama State University, Bethune Cookman University, Florida A and M, Florida Memorial University, Hampton, Harris State, Miles College, North Carolina A and T State, North Carolina Central University, St. Augustine University, South Carolina State, Selman College, Tennessee State University, University of Louisiana, uh, Xavier in Louisiana. Um, Delaware State, we just received a rep from um, Howard. So it's still going, um, and that list will continue to grow, but we are very excited about the schools who have are sending reps to us. And thank you so much for reading that list. I know it was kind of a long list, but I, I wanted people to hear the names of the schools because when we think of HBCUs, we think Hampton, Howard, Xavier, this, Tennessee State, FAMU, like there's very few of them that people can name. But I saw that list earlier, and there are schools on there that, that I'd never heard of. And I love the fact that it's going to be such a robust amount of schools as opposed to the same ones that, you know, have the larger marketing budgets that are able to go to more of the college fairs. You all have really been able to find a, a group of schools to be very well rep representative represented within the HBCU school. So congratulations on that. Um, all right, we have a couple of more minutes remaining. I do want to, if you're able to stay with us a little bit longer, I am back on your site. So Bezel, are we able to switch the camera so that we can look at interlocking pieces again? He'll let me know when it's up. Okay, perfect. So this is um, her site interlocking pieces educational consultants i love the fact that you talk specifically about craft your narrative i'm going to run through or actually i'll just have you i have up right now 
where it says academic counseling. So briefly, because we only have a couple minutes left, but academic counseling, hit it. What is that? Basically, that is going through as a mission, working for you to map out your classes for the next four years of high school. And just really planning out, if you want to take or go to a college competitive school on you need to make sure you're taking geometry your freshman year. Yeah. So what do you need to do before that? So everything has a ripple effect, which is why I said it's important to start in middle school. Okay, so, um, admissions you know, guidance. Four years. Um, my goal is to make it through all of your different sections. Okay, so we did oh, academic yeah, counseling. Yeah. Next thing, admissions guidance. What's that? And I love the fact that you have experience in that. Yes, basically it's just helping them look at all the schools that are out there and understanding the landscape from a research institution to a small liberal arts college and giving them um, information about how their um, course selections and curricular extracurricular involvement helps them mapping where they will next go. Okay, so application support. And, and I know that this may seem like a lot, but even when I talk about the simple Fantastic Five, uh, that I talk about at the beginning of the show, all of these pieces that she uh, helps to support, all of these pieces feed into those simple five steps. Okay, so application support. So that, um, I usually look at your list. I have a tool that I created. I'm like a middleman for family. It's really, <laughs> that senior year can be quite hectic. So making sure that I'm a middleman with the parents call me and say, where are they with this process? So I have a tracker that be to all the colleges on and then the essay is due, the deadline, if there's a supplemental essay required with that, and then from there we work together in crafting those essays. Now and I think I heard well you say resume. I want to. I know I just was saying, okay, we want to go through them all, but I got to stop at that application support. You said a tracker. What? What is that? It's something that I crafted that I use and I share with the families that um, everybody's on the same page. You know, we keep everyone. We try to be proactive. Um, we don't want to wait for the last minute because you never know what may happen with um, technology when you're ready to submit your application. But making sure everyone's on the right track, and then they'll pull up their their um, application, and they'll walk page by page, making sure all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed before we hit submit. That is so important because how many times as parents have we found out about the uh, the poster board that's due the next day or the you know Hello. science project that you know they've only had three months to work on it. But now it's due next week, and you got this whole list of supplies that you need to go buy tonight. <laughs> Look at Bezel. Bezel's like, let me tell you. It's like, yeah, so I, I, that tracker that you have has got to be such a relief to be able to have parents not have to always say, did you do this, did you do this, especially if parents don't even know the questions to even ask. But the fact that you have everyone on the same page of what to do, but even just as important, when to do it by. Okay, so... And I also let the parents look over the essay before they submit. Like, is this pleasing to everyone? Oh, okay. Oh, wow. It represents your voice, your voice. Um, so making sure that their child and that student feels like they're, they've said everything that they needed to say, make sure that grit for that institution. Mm. Um, because when I was in college admissions, that was the best part, <laughs> getting to the essay. And sometimes if I was on the fence of admitting the student. If that essay was out of the park, I was like, this student can write. I can see them on my campus. I chose to admit them versus play oh, those wow. That is such a great piece of information, how that essay can determine, if you've got two kids kind of on the same playing field, how that essay can really allow one student to get selected versus a different one. Because, you know, you do, like you just said, you've got all these valedictorians, you 1600s, 4.0s. It's hard. I, I would not want to be in admissions in, in this day and age. But then I also see you have interview preparation on here. So there's some situations where students are going to have to be interviewed as well? Yeah, like some schools are test optional or... They, um, I say nothing's optional. 
in the application process. It's actually optional for doing it. <laughs> yes, yes. So one is the um, interview, and sometimes there are alumni interviews. So if you go on and do a college campus tour, which I highly encourage you to go to your top schools that you are seriously considering. Some schools look at demonstrated interest to see if you've been on campus, been in touch with your admissions counselor. Um, but there are also virtual tours if you can't and stay in touch, touch with your college admissions rep via that mechanism. But really preparing them. That's one of the things that I did when I was at Atmos Scott. We were test optional and still are. But part of the application process, if you chose not to submit a test score, mm. you had an interview. Mm -hmm. So prepping students on how to best represent themselves in that light. Okay, and then college selection, I'll, I'll kind of put these two together, college selection and ongoing support. And if you're wondering where, where I'm looking at, like what, what website, is interlocked, interlockedconsult.com. So that is where uh, we're looking today. And so those last two sections, college selection and ongoing support. So ultimately, my goal and our goal is to ensure that your child has options. And if we're, if we started and we gave a great foundation, and um, and they received all of these amazing offers, then helping really choose what's the best fit for them for the next four years, based upon the fat family's needs and what the student is looking for in their experience. In addition to that, um, sometimes the student gets to a school and they feel it's not the best fit. Mm. Also help them with um, transferring. transferring. I'm working with um, a client right now who's <laughs> transferring um, to another school because it wasn't a good fit. Oh wow! So you, when you say ongoing support, you definitely do mean <laughs> continuing through, uh, making sure that that school is a good fit. You know, this has been and with internships. I have a client. Oh. I work with her two children, and I'm helping. I've helped her children over the course of years, and she spread the word around, helping them find internships in college for the summer. Oh yeah, that's another really important piece, especially. So not even, so in addition to when they're in college, helping them find internships, but then also making sure that their summers are spent wisely while they're transitioning from middle school to high school. And then again, then again, also uh, their summers while they're in high school. Now I have one quick personal question. I, I can't believe I waited till the last part to think of this question. So my daughter, because like I said, my son, we started him in a STEM camp and, you know, he did that all the way through. My daughter's going to be playing flag football, and so flag football practice is like all summer long. So I'm 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 kind of torn. Like, do I still try to squeeze in an internship? I like I have literally no idea what to do. So I guess that's why I'm I'm asking you in the last two minutes of my show <laughs> if you have any suggestions. Yeah, well, I, I just, yeah, yeah, totally. No, let them do the flag football. My son is a rising senior next year. He plays. Um, high school football, he wants to be a Division One. he has the talent to do that. And so his summers are at football camp and <laughs> training for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of showing the academics, um, if there's an opportunity to find a summer program, making sure they're keeping on track with their reading and things of that sort um, to, so they won't get that summer melt. But schools look at, it's not necessarily quantity, but the quality. Okay. Okay. Because that's what I was trying to make sure. Like, as a, you know, as a girl, is she going to be penalized because she played a sport that? I think it's cool. Okay. Good. Because I mean, there's not going to be like a flag football college that uh, that she's. I don't know though. I shouldn't even say that. And in, in this day and age, there there could be. So a college for flag football. So yeah, you never know. Okay. Well, that makes that makes me feel better because when I first heard that practices literally start. <clears throat> the first week of summer and go through all summer, I, I was a little taken aback by that. But, you know, they are one of the highest ranked flag football teams in the country, so I guess that's why. <laughs> but, um, okay, so. But there goes your summer. Yeah, there you go. So, as we close, let's make sure we talk again about the main reason why we're here. Uh, Alvanita, I'll let you take it away and make sure you. Tell everybody about the most important reason why we're talking today about that HBCU college fair. Yes, in less than almost two weeks, 
there we are having the eighth annual HBCU College Fair, and we being Jack and Jill chapter, uh, Sun Coast chapter of Jack and Jill. So the Sun Coast chapter of Jack and Jill will be hosting its eighth annual HBCU College Fair on campus at Shorecrest. We are so grateful to our sponsors, Mill Communities, HCA Healthcare, um, the Links Incorporated St. Petersburg Chapter, and Shorecrest Preparatory School for supporting this event. The first 100 students, or first 100 um, registrants on site will get a swag bag, but you'll also receive uh, a raffle for um, two laptops and an iPad. Um, beginning that day, um, early in the morning, once you receive your confirmation code, once you've registered, you will receive a confirmation email that provides a link to another opportunity that begins at 8 a.m. on that Saturday morning at Shorecrest. It is the SACAC, which is the Southern Association for Admission and College Counselors um, workshop, where there will be admissions counselors and admissions officers speaking about the college search, how to um, utilize your time at a college fair wisely, and information about um, scholarships and financial aid process. I'm um, so excited! Um, oh, mm -hmm. finish, yep, yep, finish yeah. up, registration, registration. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I'm sorry, registration will begin at 12.30 for the HBCU event. So if you're on site already for that um, SACAC workshop, just walk on over and um, we'll be ready for you. I am super excited. I will definitely plan on seeing you at 8 a.m. I love the fact that you even mentioned that the 8 a.m. classes are going to help you understand how to best take advantage of the actual college fair that's happening uh, that afternoon. I hope that you've enjoyed your time on the show. I, I am so appreciative of you joining us today and definitely can't wait to get to that college fair. So I will be seeing you soon, and hopefully I'll see some of the – well, Bezel, you registered, so I guess I'm just, I guess we're going to have to cancel the show for that day because we'll both be at the college fair. Have a great – be live the show, so we the show Oh, he said do it live? Or do a pre-recorded show. We'll take footage of the show and we'll show it. Okay. Oh. Well, hey, we're going to try to figure this out. So we'll definitely be seeing some more of you. So then we can interview her in person. We'll love that. Thank you so much. All righty. Well, you have a great day. To lose. Likewise. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you again for watching. <laughs> Bezel's like, do the thing. I'm like, I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for watching College Cash. I am Money Michelle, all about navigating you to nuggets of information worth thousands of dollars. We'll see you soon at that college fair. Tell a friend to listen in. It's In Touch Radio. Reality Radio.